Okay, everybody, thanks for coming and dropping by the F-Bomb Photo Lab channel here. Today we're going to talk about stuff that has to do with analog and film photography and darkroom and all types of geeky photo stuff. And uh, today I've got something special on the go and uh, it has to do with the original 3D of photography in the film world. So um, in the film world, when you wanted to do some 3D photography and you wanted to have like a different perspective, you would shoot it with a, what's called a stereoscope camera, which was a camera with two lenses on it. And uh, then you'd have to have a viewer and view it at a certain distance and put some sort of binocular on and then the two images would kind of overlap each other and then it would create this idea of 3D. And the nice thing about the 3D in, in the film world is that really, it, it really feels amazing and it looks absolutely real. The, the idea is that the two lenses are photographing at exactly the same moment, but like your eyeballs, at two off-centers, at two off-centered, a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, and that, when you combine them optically and you overlap them optically, it creates the illusion of three-dimensional. So. I bought myself for Christmas a stereoscope viewer, which I've always wanted to have one. And then I'm like, wow, you know, the cards that came with it, and they're usually cards, and, and they're laminated panoramic cards, and there's two images on it. So one from each of the lenses. So when you put the binoculars on, you'll only see one because of the overlap of the optics. But really, it creates the three-dimensional. So they're literally laminated cards with two photographs. And all the ones that came with my stereoscopes are actually quite bad. And I've been wanting to just do my own photography and see if I can do like cityscapes and you know also do some like studio portraits and I've been wondering like how can you do a 3D portrait of someone in the studio and have a really cool effect in an analog kind of way. So it's just so that it's more personal and uh, even digitally we could probably even try to overlap them in, in Photoshop and see what it does. I have no idea. This is kind of a new path of discovery for me. So we're going to talk about the camera setup that I built over this. It is. We're going to look at one machine. This is the top view, like a bird eye view of it. This is the actual sideway view of it. So here you'd have a photograph that you laminated, right? And then you have a, a set distance, so this is already built to the viewing distance you need to. And then you've got this pair of binoculars that are built inside the lens board here. So you have two lenses, so two viewing lenses here, where you put your left eye and your right eye. Viewing here, and then this is the axis where the two, the optics will cross over going this direction. Then you have one photograph here, one photograph there that were taken with a stereoscope image which are two lenses at a preset distance recreating the eyes, the centers. So you have the left and the right and then the minute you overlap these two, these two create this 3D look to the image. It might give you a little bit of a trip for your eyes to adjust to the optics, but once it adjusts to the optics, first thing you know, it becomes a 3D image just because of the decenter ring of the uh, of the photograph. So that's how you used to have it, you know, especially in the old days during the uh, American West, they would send back images of the Great West that were taken with stereoscope cameras because then you'd see the grandness of the landscapes of the of the western landscapes in the United States and in Canada and you'd have it in three dimension which was absolutely phenomenal so perfect for landscapes and uh, I've never seen a lot of studio work done this way but I've been meaning to do it and to try it so this is what I'm gonna do for my setup and we're gonna talk about this okay so this is how I built my camera setup so I needed the first thing I needed to do is to see if I can mount two lenses into one camera and uh, I couldn't find a really good sharp way of doing this. I see some extensions that they sell online and stuff like this that are kind of they might work and they're literally a concept of a mirror that splits and they're kind of awkward lenses and they only fit a certain narrow 
mount lenses so it's kind of a problem and then I've, I have a lot of cameras so like getting another piece of gear just for nothing is not sensible for me so I decided to use my old Olympus system which I really like and it's very small and they work together very well and I have many different bodies of the same style and that's kind of important because if I'm not going to mount two lenses on the same body I want the film plane to be at exactly the same same area same depth and I want the lens the taking lens to be at exactly the same distance so I need to have two camera bodies that are exactly the same and the film plane that are exactly the same and I want the two lenses to be exactly the same so that when you're looking at it all the angles fit perfectly now I have an Olympus OM1 on the left side and then I have an Olympus mounted the opposite way on the other side and uh, I've mounted it with a tripod with a paramander now you know I have thought I have the gear so I'm gonna use a paramander a paramander is a parallax parallax corrector for a 120 camera but there's a tripod socket on both ends and so I could put literally two cameras side to side or bottom to bottom so I can shoot in the same direction which is what I've tried to do uh, here and it kind of works there's a little bit of a, of a shift up and down from left to right but nothing I can't correct later on in the dark room just enough to you know make it work so here I have two 50 millimeter lens um, this is going to be the test part of this uh, of this machine is you know I've just literally just built this and then I'm going to go out and start taking some shots I think it's going to be amazing for landscapes for for like far away subjects um, most stereoscope images were taken with a 35 millimeter so I think eventually I might have to get two 35 millimeter lenses to fit on this system and maybe it'll work better but that's what I'm going to discover I'm hoping the 50 is going to work and I'm hoping it's going to work for studio work even though that's where I think the distance will play a role you know with a wide angle and maybe the wide angle creates a better 3d effect i don't know so we're gonna work this together and you know you're gonna see me through the journey on this thing so i have an olympus om1 on one side olympus om2 on the other uh, i have a paramander that is basically two tripod socket uh, if that wasn't gonna work i was literally gonna try to find a tripod screw that was long enough to carry two cameras and I would have literally screwed them together and then uh, you know I think it would have worked hopefully the distance between left to right is just enough and uh, if not I might have to even put the screw in between and then I've put an LED light underneath it's just so I can have it and it's battery packed and whenever I want the light in front of me I do it um, when you're using flash and when you're using light in the outdoors it already creates a sense of three-dimensionality when you're photographing it <clears throat> so I'd recommend like you know even adding a little bit of light or whatever it'll really create a sense of depth so I want to work with the depth and I want to work with depth of field and I want to see where we can take this and uh, that's why I've got this battery powered light here it's easy it's mounted on my tripod and uh, I'm trying to have it set up so that it's pretty much at my eyesight level because I really want it to feel natural and see if it can work together um, in a very natural kind of way and uh, so we'll be talking about next time next episode we're going to be talking about my first results with those 50 millimeter lens I'm probably going to use uh, black and white in both I'm going to use the same film of course I need to keep everything really consistent and uh, and we can talk about this the other problem that there is I, I forgot to mention this is that you, it has to be triggered at exactly the same time so if you want to take a 3d photograph you want it to be exactly the same moment especially with a portrait of someone so that really you capture the left and the right at exactly the same time so that's why I have this double split trigger here that I have screwed up on both cameras and here I have them both set up as 60th of a second and if you look inside the lens all I have to do is press the pull the trigger and both of them go at the same time 
So really, you're taking two photographs of the same moment all the time. So, and then eventually, I, I want to do some tests in, in the color world too, like color film, and see if that, how that works, and if that works well, and uh, probably even do a black and white in one and color in the other, and, and see if we can do some real trippy stuff. But uh, you know, when when I think it's gonna look cool, I might never do. So you know, we're just gonna play with this and, and see where we can go. And then, you know, we'll talk about it in the, in the digital and see if we can take them in Photoshop and actually create 3D images with them, too, because that would actually be interesting. So, um, otherwise, you know, the stereoscope, it's a very cool thing. Uh, it died in photography pretty much in the late 60s when the red glasses, basically the red and the, 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 red and the cyan glasses came out and 3D kind of took another leap into kind of you know, that world of movie and anamorphic lenses and, and all those things. So, you know, I find that going back to the simple, you know, personal stereoscope and having a, a world, you know, in a, in a small machine is, is going to be phenomenal. So this is it for the stereoscope today. And uh, you're going to see the first images coming next episode. And we'll figure this out together. The technique behind the stereoscope and from the taking to the viewing so literally here we have the viewing apparatus that you need in order to uh, view the images so I have it on the screen here I'm just gonna show you it's actually well here's here's the machine itself and uh, so you put your face here and then you have uh, two two lenses and you're gonna see two images left to right and in here, this is the crossing point right at the end of this piece of wood there where the, the viewpoint crosses over and then you have one single, you view one single 3D image. Um, here's a good look at what this is here. And then you see, uh, of course, your left eye will look at the one on the right and your right eye will look at the one on the left. So when you do go into the picture taking side of all this photography, here you have a perfect example of what that photograph actually is. And uh, here you have this Victorian woman looking inside a stereoscope. And uh, so she's looking at a 3D image right now. It looks kind of awkward, but it is kind of fun. And it's, it's really a window through, through time and through space and, and three dimensionality. And what you're going to see here is you're going to see the shift between, you know, literally, you're going to look at the edges of where this flower pot here is compared to what on this side it is. Here it's cut out and here you see it completely. And when I'm talking about uh, the two lenses being off-centered just slightly, that's what I'm talking about. So the, the, the two images are completely different, but they are slightly off one to the next. Uh, you see it also here in the statue, the distance between the wall, the brick, and the statue. So you know that everything is just off-centered a little bit, and that's what creates the 3D look the minute you look inside inside your stereoscope so this is a typical stereoscope here and this is a make a house made stereoscope if you may um, that the invention that si that education uh, victorian virtual reality website has shown us so uh, i'd like to thank them for that because it's actually a really good website uh, showing stereoscope and uh, so, of course, there's other different kind of apparatus that were invented that were doing the same thing, and you could actually travel with them. Here's a travel version of it. Um, there's the spider version of it for military purposes, which is kind of very cool. I'd like to find one of those if I could. Uh, I've never actually seen one. And you have the typical 3D that everybody knows as the stereo vision disc. Uh, I don't remember what the name was for this thing, but it was like uh, the Viewmaster, of course. The Viewmaster! I can't believe I forgot that. But everybody grew up with the Viewmaster, and that's basically the cheapest stereoscope you've ever seen. 
And uh, there was a disc with images and slides on them, and then they would just, as you crank the crank here, it would turn around and you'd see all these beautiful places in 3D. Sometimes Disney, sometimes, you know, the pyramids and all the classic stuff. Here's a nice image of a classy stereoscope. So I'm going to try, the, the one I have at home is a very simplified version of this. And uh, I want to try to build a series of images uh, around Toronto where I live and uh, do some streetscapes with it and then do some serious uh, studio photography with it. And uh, we'll see. I'll keep you posted.